All right, on today's video, this is part two of the Azusa NPR air conditioning rehab, if you want to call it that. Part one, I replaced the expansion valve. I showed you how to remove the air box, how to take the expansion valve out, replace the O-rings, and remove, uh, reinstall the expansion valve. And this is the second part of the video. Uh, this condenser is not leaking, but it is, you can see, damaged. It's crushed a little bit. I have a replacement condenser, and um, this is not hard to do. Basically, there's there's eight bolts, and then you've got the uh, the two lines that feed into it. We're going to be replacing that. Um, I'm trying to see the light's going to. So on this condenser, um, you don't have to remove the fan. All right. This fan is mounted to this support bracket here. So once the high and the low side are removed for the condenser, we can unbolt the eight screws and the condenser will slide right out. So what I'm gonna need to do on this is I'm going to um, go ahead and tilt the cab forward so we have more room and you can actually see what I'm doing. All right, we've got the cab lifted up here. And I'm going to attempt to do this. I don't know if the light is so bright out here. I don't know if it's going to allow a visual, but it's pretty much all 10 millimeter. I'm going to pop this loose. And then the one on the bottom. Now, obviously, I have the, there's no pressure in it because I uh, just did the expansion valve. But if you're just doing the condenser, then please make sure that there is no refrigerant in the system. Okay, bolts come out. There's going to be an O-ring on here on each side. You can tap just like that, just very gently, if you wish. Because it's probably, if it's the original one, it's probably going to be pretty tight. Alright, both of those are off. I apologize, I failed to mention, you have to take this bracket right here. You have to take this bracket off. Uh, there's two 12 millimeter nuts here, and then on the back through the fan, there's two uh, 10 millimeter nuts, and that allows the um, condenser to slide out. The reason that it won't drop down is because of these right here. All right, so this is the condenser. It's damaged. Uh, it does not leak, but the uh, problem is... This is the most, the bottom third of the condenser is the most important part because as the um, vapor comes in here, it starts condensing into a liquid and the bottom third is where most of the liquid is going to flow out. And because it's restricted, we have an issue here. Now the receiver dryer is right here. Okay. I'm going to take this apart for you guys. Inside here is a desiccant bag and, um, the new condenser comes with that. Also, if you're replacing this, you need to put one ounce of PAG oil in the condenser and you're supposed to put one ounce in the receiver dryer. However, because the um, you don't want this receiver dryer open to the air for any length of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the O-rings on the lines. All right, there's an O-ring there, and there's one right there. I'm gonna change the O-rings, and I'm going to uh, go in the house where it's air conditioned and the humidity is a lot lower. I will pour one ounce of oil, I'll probably put it in the top, one ounce of oil in there, and um, we'll take the uh, this off and I'll pour one ounce of oil in there on the new one. 
All right, so I uh, very loosely put the bracket that I'm gonna need on there. This will help with the installation. I test fit all the bolts. For the Isuzu's, you need the ND Oil 8. Do not use any other type of oil. So this takes uh, basically two ounces needs to go in the condenser and one ounce in the receiver dryer. I don't want to open the, the receiver dryer because of um, it's just going to accelerate the amount of moisture that it is going to absorb. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, one ounce in the upper chamber and one ounce of the lower and it'll it'll get into the receiver dryer almost instantly anyway. Um, so we'll pop this off. 59 milliliters is what this takes. So I'm going to take my syringe. Make sure this is accurate. Okay. I'm gonna pop this off. There may be, or not. Thought there may be some. Uh... Nitrogen in there, but there's not. That's 10. I'm just going to move this around a little bit. I want the oil to um, to soak down in there and the tubes because I don't want any spilling out. All right, so I'm going to go back under the truck. We'll hook this up and I need to get the blocks. I've already put the O-rings on. I put refrigerant oil on there and we'll uh, just get this back in. All right, so the condenser is now on. When you put this on, see this uh, air conditioning bracket right here? Loosen this nut right here, enough so this flops around. And put both of the lines on first with this super loose. All right, it's gonna look all jacked up when you do, but make sure to do that first. And then tighten all these up equally. Once the two brackets are tight under here, then you can put the two bolts for the fan shroud and then last you're going to put these two brackets here and when you do this it's going to torque it's going to move this line because this is not going to line up most likely um, but once you get it torqued these are 49 inch pounds both once you get everything done then tighten this nut back up all right so what i'm doing now is i've got our pressure probes hooked up it's about 15 pounds of pressure uh, before I pressurize the system to leak check it, I'm going to let it run with nitrogen for a while to push any air that's in there out. All right, so while the truck is being pressure tested with nitrogen, I had taken this loose. This is the receiver dryer, and I'm going to show you the desiccant bag. Okay. So that's what it is. It's just a bag filled with a uh, palletized desiccant to remove any moisture. So <clears throat> the problem is that uh, if you expose this really more than 30 minutes, it runs it. That's why anytime you replace these, you need to replace it and immediately do a uh, nitrogen sweep and then pull a vacuum, a deep vacuum on it to make sure that it doesn't run the desiccant. All right, so we passed the pressure test and now we are vacuuming down the system and I'm gonna let this uh, go for a little while. I'll 
it'll be below 500 microns for sure. All right, so this is kind of upside down. I changed the um, three ways to the valve core tools because they have shutoffs on each end. And we're at 190 microns, and we're going to let this sit and see if it holds. All right, so it's been 12 minutes. Obviously, this is upside down, and we're still at 220 microns. Uh, the standard is below 1,000 microns. If you're below 500, uh, that's really good for moisture removal. If you're below 400, that's phenomenal. So we're, stay, we're staying at 220 microns, and we've been here 12 and a half minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the vacuum gauge off. Right. I'm going to remove the vacuum gauge. Okay. All right, so I've got everything hooked up. Um, the only thing that I need to do is to, I'm gonna turn this off. There's refrigerant in the hose. I've already purged everything all the way to here. Um, and I need to turn the scale on. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this. So we need 440 grams. So we'll zero that out. Okay, so I'm going to open this and then so I'm injecting liquid in the liquid side. Perfect, 440 grams. Well, here. So I'm turning this off. That'll remain off. We've got our probes hooked up, and we see in our um, <clears throat> pressures we have 96 and 101. So we're going to let that stabilize just a minute before we crank the truck up and see what kind of air we get. All right, so our pressures right now are 31 on the low side, 271 on the high side. Before, this would climb up almost to 400, 425. So I'm gonna let this run for a while and we'll look at the air temps inside. All right, so I wanna show you our pressures. Our low side is running at 23 and high side at 250. That is outstanding. Um, that's evaporators about 30 degrees. And let me show you the air temps. It's blowing out of the vent at 48 degrees. The uh, supply going into the evaporator is 71 degrees. So we're getting a 23 degree drop in the air temp. And I want, it is so incredibly humid out here. I want you guys to see how much water has been pouring out of the evaporator. And that's because of humidity. So this one, it's already down to 47. I expect this will be in the low 40s when it stabilizes. But yeah, very, very pleased. All right, guys. Well, this was a big job. Um, I suspect this job would have been close to $2,000 if you took this to the dealer. To replace the condenser and the, uh, you know, that was not that big of a deal. Uh, the hard part was the expansion. That wasn't that big a deal, the condenser, but the hard part was the expansion valve in there. So. Let me show you uh, the setup. I've got the probe in here, and it is nice and cold. All right, so it is the next day, and I went on about a 30-minute drive or so, 
and these are our pressures right now we've got 19.6 on the low side and 250 on the high side the uh, air temperature on fan speed 2 got down as low as 39.5 it will actually it'll go potentially lower on the slowest fan seats the slowest fan speed because the um, the air has more contact time with the evaporator so um, there's not a lot of volume there see it's already dropped down to 39 no, back to 40 yeah so hopefully if this helped you guys let me know in the comments and I will talk to you in the next video